I want to start with the basics, though, because why would a woman, you're a divorce coach from moms, why would a mom need a divorce coach? Well, this is a huge transition, and it requires us to be experts in an area that we aren't meant to be experts in. Mm. It requires us to have calm and strategy and clear thinking and be savvy and take care of ourselves at a time when everything feels like it's falling apart. And so the contradiction there is completely overwhelming, even just the step-by-step process. Most people come to me and they're like, I just need to know what the process is. And then I ask, okay, what do you need help with? And then they start sobbing. (laughs) <laughs> what do I tell my kids? And will I ever see my kids experience Santa again? Or will I ever be able to afford to go on vacation? And what do I do next? And I can't get out of bed. And so it is so much. So foremost, it's someone there to remind you, you can do it. It's mm-hmm. possible. I'm a living example of it. I hear you. I get it. And Here's the process. Now let's break it down into a smaller process and an even smaller process. So you can take five minutes to do it today. And then you're going to practice self-regulation, soothing activity, eat, (laughs) put the wine bottle and turn off the Netflix for a little while and breathe. Somebody to remind you how to build the resources to do those things. And then from there, it evolves into big strategy. What do you want for your life? What are we negotiating in this divorce that will help you get there? How are you talking to kids? What kind of parent are you going to be? So it is so much that always begins with process. And that's really powerful because I've had friends and relatives who've gone through divorce and, you know, sometimes by their own action, sometimes blindsided. I don't think anybody goes into marriage hoping that it's going to just be temporary, you know. But those are different people and they've got lockdown prenups. So they <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, I've got this, Jessica. I don't need, it. you know, but it's funny. I was going down the rabbit hole of your TikTok and watching some of your advice. And I've been married for 20 years. And I really hope that divorce is not in my future. And some of the advice I actually took as a married person was still really valuable. Like there was one video in particular where you talk about the best advice you got. And it was like, you are more than this relationship. And I think sometimes as married women, just a little sidebar, if we start to realize that we are more than just this relationship, that we are still 20 years later, two unique individuals who make a choice every morning when we get up to be together, but to also be who we are individually, that maybe, (laughs) maybe you won't end up divorced. Maybe like I, I, I think there are times where we lose ourselves, right? And so finding yourself, if you're listening right now and you're like, I'm not divorced, I plan, don't plan to go, you know, get a divorce. Okay, cool. Let's still stay here because number one, you probably are supporting or have a girlfriend, a sister, a relative, whatever, who is going through it. But also there's a lot of relationship with ourselves that you're coaching through. That's it. That is the thing. That oftentimes when we are in a transition or a trauma or we're scared or we're feeling really shitty, the core issue is we are not loving ourselves hard enough. And I say that not to blame women because when we are growing up, most of us are not taught this is how you love you. This is how you're, you're going to love you. It actually radically changed for me when a friend of mine started posting on Facebook I got the sushi because I love me. And I was like, whoa, wait a (laughs) second. I've never said that. And once I did, I realized like this is much bigger. This has nothing to do with any relationship I'm in. And I'll say something kind of radical here. Even with your kids, your life is bigger than your relationship with your kids. Even though Mm. your children can be at the core and the heart of who you are, you have to have more and love yourself at the center. And of course, happier mom, healthier mom, happier, healthier kids, of course. But we, I don't think we can expect ourselves to be our full best selves, especially when times are tough in relationship with anyone else, if we are not willing to go there for ourselves. We will just keep circling about to the same stuff over and over again. And so it does apply. And I love hearing that somebody who's married and been married for a long time can hear some of that and feel like, oh, this might change my thinking 
But I think ultimately it's about choosing ourselves and what do I want most and what fuels me. Jessica Ashley is rewriting the narrative of divorce. She's a certified divorce coach and helps women thrive through transitions with grace, creativity, and maybe a little cussing. On TikTok and Instagram, Jessica posts videos daily to a rapidly growing audience of women seeking community and clarity. But she's also getting some unwanted attention from an extremely opinionated and outspoken political commentator who recently blasted Jessica on his YouTube page, followed by millions, quote unquote, canceling her and garnering thousands of comments, which in turn encouraged some of those followers to harass her online through her social channels and website. You don't have to be divorced or even considering it to appreciate that there are men out there trying to silence women from sharing their personal experiences, but we are grown-ass women who will not be silenced. In fact, it's the reason I chose to invite Jessica here today. I believe when a woman is supported in using her voice, it allows all of our voices to be heard. This is the Grown-Ass Woman's Guide. I'm your host, Jackie McDougall. There are so many women in the Grown-Ass Woman's Guide community, in my own community, in my life, who go through this, who think that they're in this relationship for the long haul, and maybe they believe they were, and then suddenly like the rug is pulled out from under them. Do you see that a lot with your clients? I see more that it is a very slow and steady burn that suddenly Mm. engulfs the whole house. That's mostly what I'm seeing now. Mm -hmm. I think there are some reasons for this. I don't say this out loud on TikTok very often. I don't put it on my website, but my specialty is helping women who are healing and leaving from emotionally abusive relationships. It's one of my areas of specialty. And that rose up out of need. And I think in, in COVID times, because we have many layers of trauma right now that we're coping with, isolation and illness and uncertainty and job loss and parenting and everybody being home, like all these things have mm-hmm. exacerbated any little toxic thing that is in a home or in a relationship. And so where women went to work, maybe, and then suddenly they're at home all the time, or they mm-hmm. could be preoccupied with kids who suddenly had no activities, any abusiveness just got bigger and bigger where it could not be ignored or sidestepped. And so the realization, oh, wait, this has actually been happening all along. I just didn't know or I didn't acknowledge. And and that was for me, too. I count myself yeah. in that. And and so I think most of the time we know most of my clients are not, oh, my gosh, this person had an affair. Right. Things have not been good for a really long time. I was patching it together. We were going to therapy. I thought it could get better. And then I found out this information and it confirmed everything. I think most of the time, any of those explosive things are symptomatic of the bigger cracks under the surface. Right. I think I've watched too many Lifetime movies. I'm like, he has a totally (laughs) private life and four kids in a different state. Okay. Bring me back, Jessica. Bring me back. I've only had one of those clients. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I've heard some stories, but I think, yeah. So you talk about emotional abuse. Sometimes I feel like it's hard to identify. Mm. Is that true? There are markers. I'm not a diagnoser. I'm not a therapist. I am very well studied in this area. And so I have questions that I ask that help give me information and are red flags for me. Mm. And then I ask the women straight out, would you categorize this as an emotionally manipulative relationship or an emotionally abusive relationship or physically, sexually, financially, psychologically? And then I make the choice to believe women because Mm. we have way too many spaces where we question women, particularly in the legal system and in the family law system, where women are made to prove what has happened to them. And the court repeatedly makes access to that abuser more and more required for children and for moms. Now, I only work with moms, so we don't need to touch on the other part of that, which certainly exists as well. But I choose to believe women and to operate from there. Now we can look at pattern of behavior and create a communication strategy and exit strategy, the support that you need, but I just choose to believe. And that comes out of experiences myself where a therapist said, "Mm, he didn't hit you. And Uh I've just heard that way too many times. And, and I don't want to be that person. 
Isn't it incredible how low the bar can be? Yeah. And, you know? and continually, continually. And that is systemically true. Right. Well, let's, let's flip this a little bit to the, to the positive. So you okay, have, yeah, let's do it. yeah, women who come in and, and start to work with you. Maybe they discovered you on TikTok. Maybe they know you through Facebook like I do. What kind of changes do you see in their lives? Is it like flipping a switch? Is it a, a long process? What do you see in your clients? You know, this work is humbling every single day. It is extraordinary to stand next to a woman who really is open and invested in shifting her habits, her thinking, in standing for herself, in showing up with courage in the big and small moments. And I do get to see it every day. You, you know, it takes a few months to really get things rolling and, and a week-to-week, day-to-day commitment. But what I have seen are women who are terrified that they are unable to earn money or support their children financially thriving. Mm. I see women who negotiate some kick-ass settlements in their divorce, who are moving their children through transitions beautifully, who can say, like, I'm actually relieved, who are seeking out therapy, running marathons. And it's not just like big, she's out here being a badass. It is, I see my own power and I'm stepping into it. It is not new power. It is reshaped, reformed, polished power of like, I am going to keep doing better and being better, not engaging in toxic behavior. I'm not taking the bait. I'm going to stand for myself. I'm going to take care of my kids in the way that is the core of who I am rather than fall apart. Now, we get to have moments where we're real human beings and we we can be falling apart and be standing in our power, but then picking up and like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go back into this mediation session and I'm going to say what I need to say. So that is amazing to see where women are three months later, six months later. I usually check in maybe a year later. How are you doing? Just to see women say like, I am so happy. Mm-hmm. I have a bigger life than I ever thought I would. I'm um, thriving. I got a promotion. I wrote a book. It is extraordinary. And I think that then the divorce becomes secondary to I moved through this transition. I did this big thing. I took the opportunity rather than who I made it through divorce. Right. Or I got Christmas, you know, or whatever right. that is. It, it Those details begin to fade away. Yeah. Of the divorce. So I think it's really miraculous that someone who would go through, based on the conversations I've had with you, I would say a painful divorce, mm-hmm. who not only you were able to pick up your own life, the pieces of your life and, and yourself, but to be able to use that as your purpose for other women was there a light bulb moment one day that was like, I want to help other people be like me? Like, what, how did that happen? It really came incrementally. I was writing for my OG mom blog. Mm-hmm. It was a love letter to my then husband and my toddler. Things in my marriage were coming apart and then suddenly ripped to shreds. And I left. I never wrote about it. I didn't tell anybody about it. And one day I got so angry, I took off my wedding rings and I sat down and I wrote a post called Today I Took Off My Wedding Rings, hit publish, didn't even read it. And it was a launch for me because the support I received back at a time when lots of moms online were not writing about divorce Mm. was enormous. It totally changed the trajectory. From there, it just kind of kept going and kept going and I got hired and I wrote more and I wrote more and I started having so many friends, friends of friends, readers reach out and ask me questions and I could answer them with my own advice, but I knew I needed more. And one day on LinkedIn, I saw a divorce coach and I was like, hmm, what's that? And I decided to check it out. I found the only certifying body in the United States. I reached out and I said to them, I'd like to produce content for you in exchange for doing my training. And she said, yes. And I was like, okay. And I thought, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to get information and write a book. Mm. And my first day in the training, I almost fell out of my chair, literally almost fell out of my chair because I had this incredible understanding. This is my calling. I want to change the narrative of divorce for women to one of trauma and victimization and being stuck and trapped to one of being the open door to our bigger, happier, healthier lives. And the second greatest gift of our lives after having children. I can do that. 
And that was where everything changed. COVID was another turn in that road because my content work that I was doing completely went away. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly had so many clients who were stuck in the house and needed help. Wow. You know, there are two things that you say there that really stand out for me. I mean, number one, it was like, that's such a uh, powerful thing. Number two, you went into it, maybe not having the funds to pay for that, but using your creativity and your skills to get what you need. And so that negotiation alone, I think is so key in any woman over 40 right now who like might want something and it's like, it's out of reach. How can you get it? What do you have in exchange for that thing? Like, I just want to stop and honor that for a second because that was pretty badass for you to like well, put that out there. You. And you know, <laughs> I went to a Canadian certifying body and they were like, mm, but the one in the United States, thank goodness I was met by a woman who is older than I am, who's become my mentor, who is like, I like creative thinkers. Let's do it. And since then, she and I have like come up with so many great ideas <laughs> and have, you know, bounced ideas off of each other and created opportunities. And it's really been a great partnership. So I was met in that moment, which is great. But there was courage there yeah. because I didn't have the money. And I, I didn't know what to do next. It really took like, here's what I know I can do. Right. And the gift was I didn't know how big of an opportunity it actually was. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just like one step, right? Sometimes is exactly the thing to a new life. Yeah. So not everybody, let's get into this part. Not everybody is thrilled with your messaging online, apparently. <laughs> no. <laughs> take, take me through. Some of them like, are related to me. <laughs> Oh my, God. isn't that the case? But even some people who are not related to you, who happen to be ginormous ugh, on, on YouTube, take me back to the day where you realized that the content you were creating was getting noticed by other people. I had this experience where I've received an email, a text message, feedback from somebody I was dating. You know, I've had, I've had those moments with people before. And then a couple of weeks ago, I got a message through my contact page on my website that was, I think, could be registered as hate mail, calling mm -hmm. me a bunch of names and saying that they heard about me on this YouTuber's show. Mm. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> well, what is this all about? And I Googled it and I found that there was an entire episode by this very conservative YouTuber mm -hmm. canceling me, cancellation of the week for mm. destroying lives and destroying marriages. They played some of my TikToks and it was an entire rant about how problematic I am to the American way of being. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. And it was like, it wasn't a short segment. <laughs> no, no. And there's... <laughs> The last time I checked, there was 3,000 comments. I mean, you know, a lot of them are about my hair, my pink hair, mm. me being the devil, um, lots of assumption about who I am or what I believe in, lots of problems right there in the comment section. Wow. And so I, I want to talk about this because these conservative men who've decided how women should be, his views are dangerous. His, yes, like absolutely dangerous and harmful to you and to other women. So what's been the fallout of this scenario? Well, I think at previous times in my career, I would have been really upset about it. I wasn't. It's problematic. My initial thinking was these men's wives are my clients. Yes, they are. I know these men from the viewpoint of their wives who are leaving them or want to leave them. Mm -hmm. And so that part doesn't scare me because I'm familiar with the message. I have received some hate mail. I had one guy who's followed me around from platform to platform talking about how harmful I am and what a liar I am and found different posts. That was a little creepy. Yeah. Fortunately, we have the opportunity to block on TikTok. I block liberally because I'm not afraid of a comment that disagrees with me. I will not hold a space for women to talk about divorce and finding their way through from a place of empowerment and support 
and to hear the messages they're already hearing from their husbands or ex-husbands, their toxic ex-boyfriend. I will not allow that. They've had enough. And so I delete and block liberally, which further enrages men like this Mm. because they're not allowed in the space. But we get to have nice things. And so I don't have a problem with that. Something really good has actually come out of this as well, which is I sat down and shared it with my kids. Now, I didn't share it with my eight-year-old. She didn't need to watch the whole thing, but she asked what was going on and I told her. Mm -hmm. She was real defensive about it. He doesn't even know you and how you help women. Divorce is fine. (laughs) You can have a changing family. Like she's all up in arms about it. But my 18-year-old son watched it and I was like, tell me everything you see that's problematic in this video. And we talked about it for a while and he was like, well, it's stupid. It's a surface argument. There's no depth to it. He's calling you a plagiarizer. You only create original content. This guy doesn't know you. He hasn't watched your videos. Like he's going on and on. And he's like, how do men become like this? And I was like, well, when you go to college next year, keep an eye out for it. Because you're going to hear men talk about women. They're going to call them bitches. They're going to call them psycho. They're going to tell them they're crazy. And then they get supported by other men and it builds and builds and builds. You will notice it. But when you hear it, I want you to remember these men are talking about me and your sister and the women you love in your life. Mm. And so you will choose what kind of man you are going to be. It is very easy to become a man like this. Don't think it's not. It is. You will be pulled over like a vacuum and there will be women there to support it because they need that relationship to men like that. It's a whole other issue, but it was such a good conversation. I want to keep having conversations like that with him and I want the opportunity to say, yes, this is problematic, but we will not be stopped. Right. Do you have any fear of your safety or anything like that? Or is it a bunch of online squawking? I once in a while get in my head. I take a lot of precautions about how and when I post online about where I am and what I'm doing about what information about my children that I reveal. I also understand that I am easily Googleable. So I know there's only so much I can do about that. I think that was a choice I made early in blogging that I did not want to live in fear. I wanted to be authentically me. I have lived with toxicity in my own home to such a degree that so long as I can create a bubble of safety and security with my children and I, that is what I feel like has been the most important work of being a mother. And I don't want to give more energy to outside people. That might be super naive. It's not that I'm not going to take precautions. But I'm mostly concerned about creating that bubble of safety, security, light, and happiness in my own home with my children than I am about giving more time and energy to those guys. They've had enough. Yeah, 100%. And there's a reason, and I'm glad you went along with it, that we didn't even mention. I mean, you could Google (laughs) and find, you know, the show and all that, but I don't want to give attention to the person who's talking about you. I want to give attention to the women who you have empowered to take control of their own lives. Like that's who I want to elevate here. Right. You know, interestingly, a couple of days later, I went and spoke at a sixth grade class. My daughter's elementary school, they asked me to come in. I helped the sixth grade teacher design this program for digital citizenship. And so the kids were talking to me about how to be good digital citizens. And I told them like, this is what happened. And how do you think I should respond? And their answers were so heartening. Like you could go in and comment, but you could also just opt out and choose to be who you are. And it made me feel really, really hopeful. And I think this is actually, you know, these commenters are a small segment for most Mm -hmm. people. And I don't want to make the voice louder, but I'm pretty practiced at that too. I'm pretty (laughs) practiced at disengaging. (laughs) And I want to find the positive and I want to keep going. And I know what I'm doing is good. And I'm confident in that. And I'm 50. So Mm. I don't (laughs) know. You, you could have started there. Like, just say I'm 50 and everybody gets like what that means. I'm 50, girl. I'm a grown ass lady. <laughs> That's right. The, the stuff that like we used to engage with and yeah. engage in that now is like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. That's a benefit because sometimes when I have clients who are, 
younger, they're like, oh, well, I still have to be friends with this person. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, 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 no. And if you don't know now, you will when you're 40. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing how things shift? I mean, this the whole, it's my whole brand right there is like, we no longer have to live in a way that because we don't want our neighbor to judge us or our mother to judge us or whoever it is like you do you because <laughs> at the end of it, that's what you've got. That's all you've got. And this is true for divorce, too, because we come in with lots of messages about what we should do, how we should try to save this, how the steps we should take, who, how people will see us. And there is a great gift to be able to tell other women that's bullshit. Right. Right. And and just even the terms like broken home. Oh, yeah. No. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't believe in any of that. Failed marriage, broken home, broken family. I say like they're broken people inside, but we are otherwise evolving families. Yeah. I love that. Evolving families. And, you know, if you're like I said, if you're listening right now and you're like, I don't want a divorce, like awesome. <laughs> I don't want a divorce. Don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm not um, divorced girl. Not everybody should get divorced. And I've had clients who said like, look, I'm going back in to fight for this marriage. I'm like, great. What can we do to set you up so you can be happy, healthy and thriving within this marriage? Okay. That's a really interesting point because you're not like, no, don't go back. I mean, obviously no. if there, if, if there are signs of abuse, emotional, mental, you know, verbal, physical, sexual, any of that. I can only imagine that you're not necessarily encouraging that. No, but even if there's just you're unhappy, it's not yeah. just. If you are unhappy, that's valid enough reason. If you change your mind, that's valid enough reason. But yeah. I have, I do have clients who say like, I'm not ready. I say be committed because divorce is hard and super expensive. So mm. be committed. If you're not, let's find a way for you to be happy where you are. And do you coach those women too if they've decided to go back? Sometimes, sometimes I think they need to go it alone and sometimes mm. often they come back. Yeah. So we just hold the space. It's their own timeline. It's not my own. I just appreciate what you're doing because I am a firm believer if we lift each other up as grown ass women, if we hold each other accountable, right? It's not just like, you go girl, I'm your cheerleader, but like, hey, I see this in you. I see more for you. I see brilliance in you. And when we share that with another woman, she starts to slowly see it in herself. And when we're all living in our brilliance and our grown assery, like mm -hmm. we are unstoppable. As we empower women, everybody is empowered along with us. Absolutely. Feminism, just like anti-racist work, serves all of us. Yes. It empowers all of us to be more and to be more of ourselves. And there's a great power for that. Also, we have to acknowledge the way the systems work in this culture. Yes. Is that it's okay for us to have spaces where women are at the center. We have moved in boardrooms, conference rooms, even delivery rooms where the men have been centered for our whole mm -hmm. lives, for generation after generation. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's good for all of us. Right. And when you send that 18 year old to college and he sees that women are in this place of empowerment, he will then move forward in that manner, which will only help him and the other men that he becomes friends with as well. I hope so. It's so easy to just go, all right, Jessica Ashley, she's a divorce coach for moms. She's encouraging all the moms to go out and get a divorce. <laughs> you get a divorce and you get a divorce. <laughs> But down at the root of it, and that's my favorite part, and I cannot express it enough, that you're really helping women get reconnected with themselves so that they can move forward in this new chapter of their lives in the most powerful way they possibly can. Did I sum it up correctly? Yes. If you love yourself fiercely enough, honestly enough, what would you change about your life? What do you need? And, and who are the women who can help you get there? Because there are lots of us out here. Yeah. I can help in one part, but there are many of us out here who are willing to say, it's not enough for you. Mm. You have more. You seem unhappy in a loving way so that you can feel like you're lifted up when you take those leaps. Yeah. Well, thank you for lifting up so many women. Mm. 
doing your thing, continuing Thank you on. For doing it. I love the way you do it too. It's so awesome. Thank you. If you're interested in connecting with Jessica, she offers free consultations with what she says is none of that quote salesy stuff. I love that. I'll link to her website and all the social channels in the show description. Thank you, Jessica, for being my guest today. And thanks so much to you for listening. For a transcript of this episode, visit grownasswoman.guide forward slash episode 175 and follow grownasswoman.guide on all the social channels. I'd love to connect with you there. And if I may ask you for something in return, please leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast app. I appreciate your support so very much. Until next time, you are a grown ass woman. Act accordingly. Spring has sprung. And with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconut. Coconut is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash coconut. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash coconut.